different style of pesto today. It's a Japanese style pesto. In the food processor, I'm gonna pop in a couple of cloves of garlic. Just give them a good crack with your knife. Pop their little jackets off and throw them in there. Then we're gonna take about a half a cup of toasted almonds, Marcona or blanched almonds. I have to tell you that over the commercial break, I ate a couple of fat handfuls of those almonds. So you might wanna make a little more than half a cup if you're like me and you want to eat some nice warm toasted almonds when they come out of the oven. I have that issue with bacon too. I always have to make extra because, well, I snack on it while I'm cooking with it. Um, so about a half a cup of the toasted nut goes in. Traditionally, this is just a handful of basil and then the, the seeded tomatoes. Uh, ground up together with the nuts. I'm gonna put in a fat handful of basil. I like a little bit of fresh mint and nice grassy flat leaf parsley as well. All working together in combo for my sauce. I like a little bit of acidity, so I'm gonna put in a splash of sherry vinegar, which I love. Really nice, especially with the earthiness of the almonds. Um, and then I'm gonna get this going first with our olive oil before I add the tomatoes. So I'm gonna pop that on. Get this going, and then stream in our olive oil. It'll take about a third of a cup before it starts pulling away from the side walls of your food processor. That means you're just about there. Season this up with a little salt and pepper. And then once we add in our tomatoes, these are the seeded peeled tomatoes. Again, you want about a half a dozen of your plum-sized tomato or three or four of a larger tomato, like a vine tomato. And you're gonna pop that back on and now just very quickly pulse chop in little short strides like that. Boop, 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 so that you're just combining it but not putting too much air into the game. Beautiful. Now, I stir in the cheese right in the mixing bowl that I'm gonna to toss everybody together in. Now, when you go to buy the Grana Padano or the Parmigiano, always remember to pick a piece with a nice piece of rind attached. Sometimes I see women, and well, gentlemen too, but a lot of ladies, they're looking for a piece with no rind because they don't wanna pay for it. This is gold. You use this in soups and stews, it's delicious, and the flavor goes all through the soup. It's almost time to drain the pasta, so hurry, hurry, hurry. Take a quick break and come right back. So we're about ready to toss our trapanese style pesto. Uh, tomato, toasted nut, basil. I put in a little bit of parsley and mint. There's garlic and olive oil. We're about to mix all of that together with our strozza pretty, our strangle the breeze pasta. Uh, we're gonna take out one cup of starchy cooking liquid. This is the magic glue that marries sauce to pasta. Always, no matter what kind of pasta you're making, right before you drain the pasta, reserve that starchy water. That'll make the dish come together for you. Now I'm gonna put all of my sauce into this big pot. So we've got a place to turn this all together. Add the hot starchy cooking liquid and all of your pasta. And then spin this around. I know, delicious. And don't forget, you have a couple of fat handfuls of cheese you're gonna have. <laughs> so, grana padano or uh, parmigiano reggiano. Oh my God. Ridiculous and it's legal in all 50 states and around the world. <laughs> oh, what a glorious time.